We're at Columbia University in the Laboratory for Intelligent uh, Imaging and Neural Computing, and this is my laboratory. What we do here is create and design experiments to test hypotheses in rapid decision making. So as an example, for baseball players, how do they make the decision to swing or not swing at a 95 mile an hour fastball? What's the activity in the brain? Where is it? And at what given time is it? So DeServo is a company that uh, came out of my lab, started by a uh, graduate student and also postdoc. And the focus of DeServo was to use some of the technology we developed for detecting signals of rapid decision making and applying that in the context of sports. Hitting is almost an impossible task because you have less than half a second not just to detect kind of the pitch that's coming but actually to initiate the, the swing. And so what we as a company want to do is measure how the players do this, when they see the ball, when they make the decision, and how that affects their on-field performance. And with DeServo, they've now created a tool and an environment to assess that from a neurophysiological standpoint to track and do scouting. So this is a very simplified version of baseball, obviously. But what we're doing as they play this is recording their neural activity. That's the countdown bar. So that's to simulate the windup. If the pitch trajectory matches the cue, which is fastball, curveball, or slider, you swing, and that's called sitting on a pitch. If a curveball comes out and they were sitting on a fastball, they're gonna try and hold off because they're not ready for it. We can precisely determine in the trajectory of the pitch when they're deciding, I'm gonna swing. How accurate they are, how fast they are, when they see it, how does it make a difference between pitch types, we started getting inquiries from professional teams about whether they could use it. Teams have already started to explore neurophysiological monitoring of their players, but this is clearly a very new spin on things. And so what we found is the baseball players use an area of the brain called the fusiform gyrus that does object recognition, which allows them to pick up on certain characteristics faster than non-players. Not only that, when they make the decision, the decision areas that they're using are not in the frontal part of the brain, not the executive areas, so they're pushing their decision making to the motor areas, which allows them to be faster and more accurate. Maybe it's not just sports, it's anything with a really quick decision. Think of policemen, stock traders, military. The idea is to close the loop at some point and to create a new type of enhancement tool. When pilots are in situations where they have a critical boundary to pay attention to, like landing on an aircraft carrier or they have to stay within certain speeds, they start to overtrack the boundaries. When you're flying in the air, of course, PIOs can damage airframes. But the worst sort of PIOs are those that happen during landing. The best thing the pilot can do, actually, is just let the plane fly itself, let go of the stick. But they don't typically like to do that. We first had to understand what was the cause of it. They lose their normal training and actually make things worse. Imagine if you're riding a bicycle on the strip in a parking lot. You can ride it easily, right? Now I suspend the strip 10 feet in the air. Most of us will experience this wobbling of the handle that can get bad until you fall over. This is exactly what's happening with them. They make one mistake and then all hell breaks loose. You can think of it as an overcorrection. You again overcorrect and that just becomes larger and larger until you can no longer control the airplane. As the hoops become smaller and smaller, their focus starts changing from the center of the hoop to the boundaries. And as you get closer to the land, the stakes increase. And that's when most of the PIOs happen. So it's more about what is your focus? Is it a positive focus or is it a negative focus? And that particular insight yielded great results. We not only can identify when the PIO is happening, but we can start predicting it before it happens. We just focus on the brain activity that happens after you move a joystick because they are monitoring their own errors and they know they made a mistake, but their response is such that everything goes downhill. The idea is to create this synergistic coupling between the aircraft and the human based on the state of the operator. And that's somewhat different than a lot of brain computer interfaces that are being developed where uh, there's a focus on direct control. We are actually treading in the realm of science fiction, not thinking about what we can do right now, but how what we're doing right now is going to have an impact 10, 15, 20, 25 years from now. And not being afraid of 
investigating anything. 